What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Will Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the brand new 2024 Lexus RX 350 courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because this marks the start of the second year into the sixth generation RX. Not only that, this actually is the number one seller in the luxury midsize SUV. SUV category as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 RX 350. First one being the base, starting at $49,950, which is a $1,400 bump from the 2023 model year. Yes, inflation has been hitting every single car manufacturer from what I've been seeing here. Premium for $52,100, premium plus for $53,950, luxury for $59,080, and the F Sport handling all-wheel drive for $58,550. And so, with all of those prices but the last one there front wheel drive comes standard if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that that is going to bump the price up a little bit but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the rx is going to be the same powering the beast is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 275 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 317 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time approximately 7.6 seconds for the front wheel drive but then 7.2 seconds for the all-wheel drive there with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 29 on the highway for the front wheel drive 21 city 28 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the rx wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes and so drive modes will include normal eco sport and custom and they will all be adjusted through the infotainment screen which by the way didn't take me that long to find this year i think it took me a little longer last year maybe i got used to it but they are pretty easy to find now so Having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test. By the way, there is a full manual shift mode as well. So I'm just gonna be sliding the shifter directly to the back. That is gonna give me full control over the shifting end. Let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so we got it in full manual shift mode. It's telling me what gear I'm in up on the digital gauges here. So in three, two, one, go. Okay, massive delay to the paddle shifters. So yeah, they're not gonna be used for actually having any fun on the weekends or anything like that, but I'm still glad they're there. The reason I say that is because when it snows out here in PA, as it quite often does, when you're going down a hill, rather than hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can actually just do a little bit of downshifting using the paddle shifters to let the vehicle do a little bit of engine braking so you're less likely to actually slide off the road. So I do like that they're there for that reason, but let's go ahead and get back full control to the RX350 now. And let's find yet another straightaway and let's see how quickly the RX350 here can get us up to speed. All righty, got our straightaway in three, two, one. Auto on. <laughs> Go! That's not bad. Yeah, it is definitely not bad. There was a little bit of turbo lag at the very beginning, as expected with a turbocharged four cylinder, but. That's not bad. Definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. I personally didn't mind it. It definitely gets you up to speed once you get higher up in the RPMs without a doubt. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs and the back 13.4 inch solid rear discs. And if you were to go with that F Sport handling trim level, you will actually get six piston front calipers. That's pretty nuts. That's what I had on my old Ford Mustang GT. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that comes in at a respectable 123 feet. As far as braking feel goes, it's on the softer side of things, 100%. I just got done driving the ES350. That was a much firmer braking feel, but on the RX350, it is 100% a soft braking feel, as you traditionally do find in SUVs, most SUVs at least. So it's to be expected. I wouldn't have minded though if Lexus firmed up that braking feel just a little bit. But having said that, that 60 is here, 123 feet. That is a respectable number. A lot of times you'll get the 130, so you shouldn't have any issues of bringing this thing to a stop. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, 
you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. But if you go with that F-Sport handling trim level, you will also get F-Sport tuned performance dampers and an adaptive variable suspension as well. That's the one I always like because that monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a much smoother ride, but it is going to tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling, giving you the best of both worlds. So that's the one. If you want the very best ride quality and the best handling, both at the same time, go with the F-Sport handling trim level. But having said that, we don't have that trim. We got the luxury and it's been perfectly fine. I'm going to show a little test drive here today. So definitely no issues absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections. Like I said, no issues for me. As far as steering feel goes, it actually does tend to lean a little bit on the heavier side of things, which kind of surprises me because traditionally with SUVs, you get a loosey-goosey steering feel. And uh, this one, it's not nothing crazy. It's not like a Tesla Model Y or anything, but it's definitely on the heavier side of things. So I absolutely love that. So absolutely no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, get a little bit of engine noise when you really get on it, but it's a very serene cabin. There isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin. I got the heat on pretty good right now. So if anything, you might be hearing that. But other than that, it's pretty nice. Definitely no issues there. Then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. It is a pretty large rear view mirror there. So 100% no issues yet again. And I like how the rear window wiper isn't actually asphyxiated to the rear glass. We'll get more into that in a little bit, but that adds to a little bit of visibility, I guess you could say. But rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard for all trim levels across the board. That's gonna help out with forward visibility. So whenever the RX detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there, kind of like automatic headlights so I do like that and then with the luxury trim leveling up you're also going to get a head-up display and it is super bright I'm looking at it right now it's projected upon my windshield here gives you the speed speed limit and safety features and the safety features are actually pretty cool I was about to turn onto this road right here and I was sitting waiting to turn and it actually gives you like yellow lines telling you if there's a car coming like cross traffic in front of you it's just a wild thing. So even if you weren't looking at cars going to the left or to the right, waiting to turn out, the head-up display is gonna tell you if those cars are coming. It's just wild. Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Lexus RX 350. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Lexus RX 350 finished in caviar awesome looking color on this thing this thing looks so cool but anyways let's go ahead and start with where the rx is made take a look at the vin first character is the number two indicating that the rx 350 is built and assembled in canada eh but let's go ahead and start up front on this one overhang over that lexus logo that's one of the uh the new things when this uh, rx was completely redesigned i'll show you guys a little bit up close here but I don't know, I think it's a pretty cool little design cue that Lexus logo is kind of like tucked away underneath of it. So I honestly like the styling of that. But as far as the front grille goes, it's kind of body colored at the top and then it kind of meshes together with the silver portion of the front grille. I think that looks pretty darn cool as well in my personal opinion. It's a unique design, unlike anything you really see out on the road, honestly. So LED headlights do come standard on all trim levels across the board. You get LED daytime running lights with that as well, along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So love that feature. LED fog lights down below also coming standard for every single trim level across the board. You got to love that. And front air curtains to the bottom corners there as well. Just above the fog lights, I should say. Helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics. So Overall, the front end of the new RX looks absolutely amazing. I said that last year as well, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since you are around to the side of the RX 350, silver roof rails coming on the premium trim level and up. Rear privacy glass does come standard for all trims across the board. You do have some chrome window surrounds as well. Floating roof line towards the back, you guys can see that. The upper chrome trim kind of just fades out into the back. It's not connected, so hence the floating roof line like I was saying. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turret signals. Auto tilt down feature does come standard. You actually do get a driver side auto dimming mirror as well. That isn't always the case, even on luxury manufacturers. So that's pretty cool. As far as the wheel setup goes, 19 inch five spoke alloys coming with the base, premium and premium plus trims. Then you get 21 inch alloys for the luxury and then 21 inch 10 spoke specific alloys 
for the F Sport trim, of course, but I think the wheels look actually pretty darn good. It kind of has like this dark silver look to it. It goes very well with our caviar exterior paint. I'll just put it that way, but pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the RX, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light and tucked underneath of that rear spoiler. Let me show you guys if we can see it. But if you can't, just take my word for it. There is a uh, rear window wiper. It's tucked underneath of that rear spoiler though. So therefore not asphyxiated to the rear glass, providing a little better rear visibility when you're actually driving, like I was saying. So that's pretty cool. You got the Lexus lettering spelled out horizontally, of course, LED taillights. It's really like a big LED light bar from side to side. I think that looks pretty cool as well. And just below it all, you are going to find dual exhaust outlets. However, they are tucked away. I kind of like the look that Lexus does where they integrate it into the rear bumper, but this is kind of the style lately. So I don't know, not my personal preference, but Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the RX, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a power tailgate for all trim levels across the board. And then a hands-free power tailgate is gonna be optional for the premium trim level end up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 29.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, bumping that up to 46.2 cubic feet. There actually were some buttons in the cargo area to fold down the rear seat, so that was definitely convenient. You don't always find that. LED cargo lighting does come standard back there. There's some tie down anchors, there's grocery bag hooks, there's a 12 volt power outlet. You don't always find that either. Cargo cover also back there. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are gonna find a spare tire along with a little bit of in-floor storage actually as well maybe for an ice scraper or tire inflator kit if you prefer that but cargo area definitely had a lot going on back there but then make our way up to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 37.4 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear center armrest with cup holders and you actually have a little bit of storage just in front of those cup holders too because the center actually opens up you could probably put a cell phone in there or something like that or crayons if you got kids back there or whatever the case so that's pretty cool Rear ventilation does come standard dual rear USB charging ports so the kids can stay charged up back there as well. And heated and ventilated rear seats, they are going to be optional. So optional, doesn't come standard, but they are available if you wanted it. So a lot going on in the rear seats as well. Then make your way up to the front seats. Eight-way power adjustable front seats do come standard. 10-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar for the luxury trim level and up. You're going to get some enhanced bolstering, of course, for the F Sport. New Lux finish for the base and premium perforated leather for the premium plus trim level and up. Heated front seats do come standard for all trim levels across the board. And then ventilated front seats for the premium trim level and up. We actually have kind of a, a leather suede combination on our luxury trim. And I absolutely love that with a cool little design towards the upper portion of the seats as well so definitely a big fan of the seating in this thing it kind of surprised me with that suede that we have but that suede has continued on to the doors and we'll get more into that later but overall as far as seat comfort goes 100% on point definitely no issues there but so then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable actually for all trim levels across the board it will be leather wrapped for all trims but there is a wood leather combination for the premium plus trim level and up we have that I think that's pretty darn cool and then the premium plus trim level and up is also going to give you a heated steering wheel then as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup but let me start by showing you guys the key you got your Lexus logo on the one side when you flip it over live unlock and of course that button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone to the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen and so once started up it is a digital gauge cluster that does come standard and the cool thing is as you adjust the drive modes as I just did that's what that noise was it's actually going to change the colors of those digital gauges as well so eco is going to give you blue sport obviously is going to give you red and then normal is going to kind of give you like a grayish look so they're kind of customizable I don't mind that and there are some steering wheel mounted controls to kind of adjust what you want to display up there of course you have all the basics there's uh, how many miles you have left until you hit empty uh, trip a trip b there's a digital speedometer you actually have some boost pressure up there since this is a turbocharged engine after all so pretty much everything you could possibly want up there but now 
let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here power moonroof is going to come in the premium trim level and up however there is a panoramic glass moonroof that is going to be optional for all trim levels we have that option so that's pretty cool the rear passengers get a view of the sky now multi-zone climate control aka tri-zone climate control comes standard for all trims as well ash bamboo interior trim on the premium trim level and up there is black open pore wood trim also on the premium trim level and up however you will get a bunch of suede accents and a suede headliner if you go with the luxury trim level and up and that's why we have it today so a lot of suede going on in here which i personally love wireless phone charger for the premium trim level and up and that is located just in front of the shifter there's actually a good bit of storage right next to that as well got a couple usb charging ports 12 volt power outlet a little bit of rubberized storage just up top you could probably set yourself in up there if you wanted to just to the right of the shifter again everything is surrounded in that bamboo wood you also have um dual cup holders of course and within the center armrest there's actually a decent amount of storage in there so absolutely no issues there but again i think my favorite parts for one we have three different colors in here which i love there's like a dark brown on the doors there's the light leather and the dark leather then as well so a lot going on there also you do have these electric door openers so there's no actual door handles in the rx and uh that started last year but it's just a door button you kind of just press it and open the door and that's how you're going to open it up from the inside so that's a little different some people might not be used to that you also have home light controls to up to three Three different garage doors but the coolest thing about this mirror is that when you press the button down below there it actually turns it into a rear camera mirror and so a lot of people wonder why do you need that um, well if you take this thing on a road trip and you have luggage piled up to the ceiling in the back you obviously can't see out of your rear view mirror but if you have an exterior camera mounted on the outside of the vehicle this rear camera mirror is actually going to be able to allow you to see what is behind you when everything is piled up to the ceiling with uh, stuff to go to Ocean City, Maryland in or something like that, I'm just saying. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because it's about to get better. So 9.8 inch color touchscreen display for the base and premium trims, 14 inch color touchscreen display for the premium plus trim level and up, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay for all trim levels across the board, you gotta love that factory navigation system coming standard as well you could check out ambient lighting settings up there that's pretty darn cool so now i will say with that ambient lighting it's not the very brightest ambient lighting i've ever seen it's nothing compared to like bmw or mercedes-benz but it is there nonetheless so i kind of like the look of it i will say that but you can also check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to and of course your radio information and this is where it's really going to get good because 12 speakers does come standard on all trim levels across the board and that should be plenty fine but there is an optional sound system on the premium plus trim level and up that's going to be a 21 speaker mark levinson sound system with 1800 watts and that is built into our suede doors here so that is the one that we have today so that's why i'm excited so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Yeah, that's overkill for sure. That is a heck of a sound system. Definitely no issues there. I did have to recenter the sound system because when I first turned it on, it was just coming out of the back. So that was kind of weird, but I did recenter it and then it was coming out of all 21 speakers. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, it sounded really darn good. So absolutely no issues with that. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the RX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. The panoramic view monitor on the left, that is going to be optional. We do have it giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest rating given by IIHS, so that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front passenger seat cushion airbag as well and rear side impact airbags which by the way is like a 600 option on bmw and mercedes so you gotta love that in the back also you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to tethers your children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard lexus safety system plus 3.0 so that gives you dynamic radar cruise control with curb speed management love that pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist lane tracing assist road sign assist and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the rx 350 i love 
the front end design. Think Lexus crushed it with this design up front, especially finished in our black that we have today. It looks absolutely amazing. Great safety as well. You can't beat an IHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Great sound systems, especially our Mark Levinson sound system. They always crush it. Absolutely amazing interior quality. You have three different colors. You have suede finishes. You have leather finishes. You have perforated leather finishes. You have bamboo wood as well. You just have a lot going on, which I absolutely love. It's so nice as far as interior quality goes. I'm not sure you can beat it. As far as room for improvement goes, I got two things for you here. One, I wish the ambient lighting was a little brighter, a little more pronounced. Having said that, Lexus isn't known necessarily for putting ambient lighting in their vehicles, so they do like that they actually did put it in here, but it does need to be a little bit brighter. And by the way, I did turn up the brightness all the way. And then the other thing is in the back of my mind, at least, is I do have to question the reliability a little bit. Although Toyota and Lexus, of course, are known for excellent reliabilities, but this isn't their regular engine. This is a turbocharged engine. And traditionally, turbocharged engines aren't as reliable as their naturally aspirated counterparts or even the naturally aspirated engines with the hybrid configurations. They're incredibly reliable with Toyota and Lexus as well. I'm just not sure about the turbocharged setup. That's all I'm saying, but let me know what you guys think of the RX350 in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.